Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about mundane astrology omens for 2021. I'm going to talk about symbolism and how, you know, I, in my, this is going to be part two, watch part one first and watch my live stream that I did where I talked about the mundane uh, factors going on this year, the planetary war between Jupiter and Venus, the war of the Brahmins. There's basically an intellectual war going, going on right now, a war on ideologies for this year because of the planetary war that was going on uh, in the, in the new, Lunar New Year chart for almost every country on the planet. For every country on the planet, it was actually just depending on what sign each country was ruled by was showing how well they were doing. For example, I explained how India was stronger this year in the planetary war chart than other nations, and India has is doing a much better job with handling <clears throat> COVID and things. They're pretty much back to normal now, um, and uh, by using uh, ivermectin and stuff, which the major authorities, the Jupiter, the established authorities, said you can't do that. It's this, you know, evil. It's this horse drug or something. Well, you know, people have. People are fine that have been taking it. So that's kind of an example of this planetary war. I'm going to take this to a whole other level, though, because I've explained previously how, yeah, um, if you study astrology and you know the occult, again, remember, the word occult just means hidden. Like there are occult organs in anatomy texts because they're just hidden and hard to find in your body. So the word occult just means hidden. It doesn't mean good or bad, but there are good and bad traditions within it, just like Star Wars and the Force. So uh, if you have ex done a lot of yoga and meditation and your eighth house is more active, let's say, in your chart, you'll notice some of these things that are going on with the symbols that the elite are using in the world. And you'll notice basically uh, how some of these dark groups are acting and how they're behaving. Just kind of like in the movies how you know, someone who is more sensitive to the force would be able to pick up on someone with the dark side. And we all have this intuition or whatever. So Star Wars is kind of a nice allegory to explain some of these ideas. So, you know, I talked about in the last video how K2, the eclipse planet, K2 is what we kind of have to watch out for and let go of and not be attached to. K2 has been in Sagittarius, literally the only sign of a needle or an arrow or a projectile thing. And so this year, there's been this huge pressure from the authorities that everybody has to get this certain needle and just, uh, everyone has to just take this certain thing that our patriarchs of our culture, our Sag people are just saying, do it, do it, do it. And yet, if we do Rahu, our Rahu homework, Rahu's always where you want to work on and what we've been ignoring, but we need to put more energy in. Rahu being in Gemini shows that Oh wow, we need to be more Gemini and see both sides and read read both, you know, see both arguments, not just be fanatical about this um, or expect what we think is right for our health to be right for everyone else. So regardless of how you feel about the major, you know, topic of this year, I don't care whether you're for it or against it, but I hope you see that the idea of mandating anything on anyone's body is just pure evil. <laughs> I hope that you can see that at least because it doesn't, whether this thing's right or wrong, every human being has its own autonomy and its own free will. And to impose that on people is to take it, you know, or they can't do their job or work or this or that, that is to, um, to, to basically act like you know what's best for everyone in the world, which is the height of arrogance and the height of egotism. It is not altruistic at all. And it's just a shock that there aren't more wellness people talking about this. So I just have to make this video and speak about it some more. So, but I'm going to do this in a funner way because you guys that watch my channel are into this symbolism and really like looking at things really deeply or you probably wouldn't be watching my stuff. You'd be watching a more superficial YouTuber who's like better and louder and has better quality and better marketing. <clears throat> but let's talk about this. Okay, so the, I'm going to call it either the WAC scene or the V just for censorship reasons. Um, so the first person to, to get on the WAC scene was uh, a man, the first man was a man named William Shakespeare. 
Now this is all an omen, okay? And now this happened during the eclipse time last December. <clears throat> um, there was a, the first man to get get the procedure done was a man named William Shakespeare. The first person ever was a woman named Margaret. The uh, the so Shakespeare was the first man and the second person. So out of one, two. So Shakespeare was the first. Uh, man to get vaccinated okay and um, do you guys know anything about William Shakespeare and what that might symbolize so um, so first off William Shakespeare was the pen name for Francis Bacon a brilliant a really really smart brilliant guy who was a part of who is who's still responsible for having written the highest you know English prose and poetry and works you know to this day in the English culture but Shakespeare or Francis Bacon was part of a number of secret societies he was the some people say he started the Rosicrucians or the the Rosy Cross the Order of the Rosy Cross because the rose that grew around the cross of Christ rose symbolizes feminine energy and it's about basically uh when Christianity took over, the pagans and the occult astrology people had to go underground and had to use codes such as a rose or a snake or these different things which were symbols of being initiated or the occult. The rose is the feminine energy, the goddess, you know what I mean? All that was suppressed um, in the church times that he was living in. Um, <clears throat> Anywho, Rosicrucians, also Knights of the Helmet. They were basically just all these masons, all this sort of secret society stuff. Uh, Francis Bacon was deep in that. You know, you can see the pictures of him and all uh, doing even the je the certain handshakes and all that. Um, actually, I'm going to throw up a picture of Francis Bacon just to make sure you guys can can uh, see him. Um, now, so Francis Bacon was a part of a secret society, and they were the Knights of the Helmet, and their muse was Athena, Pallas Athena. Okay, so. Um, let me show you an image of Athena. Okay, so there's an image of Athena. You can see that she is noted for her spear. Um, that spear is what she would basically like shake at her enemies. Um, and her other no very notable symbols are the owl and the snake. And Athena was this, you know, really, she was the muse of Francis Bacon and his secret society. And she was like this goddess of art and culture and society. And um, she was the goddess of like keeping things moral and upright. And this is all just important to understand. Um, she was like, she was the muse of how to, how to guide society, you know? So these people who were into her were, these people feel that they were the, the builders of society. And that's what masonry symbolized the, the builders. You know what I mean? Who is building the world up to this great plan. Um, that they don't tell anybody else about <laughs> again um, so yeah just keep that in mind all right and now I'm gonna give you guys even a little bit more info on Francis Bacon and Athena because it's gonna be really important and juicy coming up and remember the elite you know builders of society they know all this stuff it's just we who grow up in the education system that they design and tell us what we get to learn and don't learn we don't learn this stuff along with Joe Tish or all kinds of other amazing tools that we should learn. Okay, so reading from this excerpt here that I just Googled some stuff um, on her this morning before I made this video to make sure that I was, um, you know, had my info correct. Because I first learned about this back in May. Um, but now Mercury is retrograde in my eighth house, activating my K2. I just can't help but share this stuff. Also with my second Lord Mars of speech. Anyway, so something compels me to talk about this this morning. All right, so I'm going to read this here, and I'll pull this up. Um, hopefully you guys can see this on the screen. Pallas Athena was the goddess of wisdom and was supposed to preside over the whole of the intellectual and moral side of human life. So morality, what they think is moral. She was the patroness of the useful and elegant arts such as weaving, imparting her devotees the peculiar Masonic virtues of prudence, courage, and perseverance. She protected the state from outward enemies with her spear. <clears throat> she was also credited with being the inventor of musical instruments. Um, and then it's... Uh, she's kind of related to like a Venus or Lakshmi element. 
She was depicted in Greek art with a helmet on her head. She held the spear of knowledge in her right hand, poised to strike at the serpent of ignorance writhing under her foot. Okay? The large helmet denoted that she waged invisibly a silent war against sloth and ignorance. She was usually placed on Greek temples with a golden spear in her hand. When the morning rays of the sun would hit the weapon, causing it apparently to tremble, the common people would be in the habit of saying, Athena is shaking her spear again. So she was thus known as the spear shaker. You see? The shaker of the spear. Are you catching it? So this is where William Shakespeare's name comes from, okay? So William Shakespeare was really Francis Bacon who was obsessed with Athena, his muse. So he took William, uh, William comes from Wilhelm, which means helmet of. See how Athena had a helmet? And so William Shakespeare, helmet of Shakespeare, helmet of Athena. This is what he's carrying. That's who he was, again, his muse. Um, the members of this secret literary society which centered on Pallas Athena were known as the Knights of the Helmet. They had a ritual created by Francis Bacon and were initiated, had elaborate ceremonies, vows, blah, blah, blah. Um, the initiate was capped with a helmet um, to, to denote he was henceforth an, invis an invisible, quote-unquote, in the fight for human advancement. So see, people in the secret society are supposed to be invisible to the world. They're supposed to be fighting for human advancement behind the scenes, though. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, and then the large spear was placed in the initiate's hand, indicating, symbolizing a pen also. Um, for the pen was, or for there to shake the spear of knowledge at the dragons of ignorance. So he thus became the spear shaker. And, um, you know, this little group of law students and Cambridge people and whatnot that Francis Bacon was members of, they were all became this Rosy Cross or this Knights of the Helmet, this secret society. There was more than one. Um, and it basically goes on to explain, I'll throw the text up here for those of you who want to read it, but it goes on to basically explain that these guys crafted the English language. They like literally created the language and they even faked arguments and debates and fictionalized stories and things just to get people to read more and to get people to be plugged into their language. But that's the thing is that they, the elite have coded all these things within language. And so this guy seems to have been like sort of at the root of this. Um, it's very interesting. All right. So now that you guys know a little bit about Athena and Francis Bacon and William Shakespeare, you can kind of really read between the lines more of this strange, strange story that happened that of all the people <clears throat> to get the first vaccine, the first spear, the first Shakespeare, you see, um, <clears throat> was a man named William Shakespeare? Really? Weird. And he has, uh, and he's actually the second, the first one to get it is Margaret. Well, Shakespeare's sister was supposedly Margaret. So supposedly Sha William Shakespeare which again was a fictional being, had a fictional sister named Margaret. Shakespeare was also from Warwickshire, England. This same guy is also from, who, who, who got the jab that I showed you the picture of, he's from Warwickshire, England. What? That's just so strange, isn't it? Um, that guy is now dead, by the way. The guy who got the first, <laughs> the first spear, he is he died as of may 25th i'll share that image right here um less than 200 days from it um that happened to be reported 33 days after the original william shakespeare's death or his historical death again fictional being but um that person's recorded death is basically 33 days from when they the news came out that that our William Shakespeare of contemporary times died. 33 is this number that I've already explained previously, constantly a signature of that the elite are using. Um, the elite are structuring society in a way that you and I don't see. Again, an invisible, like we talked about, the initiates of this society are an invisible. So it's... I said, you know, um, Athena's main symbol is the serpent and the owl. That's really, really bizarre because who is it that's been pushing all this stuff is who? 
the World Health Organization. What does an owl say? Who? I know that that sounds silly, but owls are like extremely symbolic, and owls are symbols of death. Ask any American Indian. Owls are a horrible omen to get. They're an omen of death, usually. Of all the ant birds I see, I, that's the last one. I'd rather see a vulture than see an owl. Um, ask the Hopi Indians. Um, owls fly around in the night, seeing in the night and taking out little innocent mice. <laughs> you know, um, that's what these people worship. You guys are the mice <laughs> that they're trying to prey on. You see, um, and yeah, it's just a little weird that all this symbolism keeps repeating itself. And then the snake and the serpent come on. I mean, the winged caudesses of Hermes, the World Health Organization, uh, their own symbol. There's so many symbols that have the wing caudesis in the mainstream medical pharmaceutical world. The serpent going up that spear, it's it all, you know, Mercury was another Greek god. Um, this stuff is all coming back to basically people that think they know what's best for us. You know what I mean? And who are architect, you know, the architects of society who are trying to be. Yeah. So Pallas Athena is like this what you know a lot of the symbolism you're going to see around this is going on and you know the elite worship duality they like to take the the divine and turn it into worshiping create they like to worship creation above the creator you can put it that way um, they love to take the unity of one and turn it into the duality of two the black and white checkerboards you always see you know things like that so um this is kind of this whole debate has been a great way to divide us all, you know what I mean, and to get us all um, worked up and um, fanatical, you know, when really we all need to be doing Rahu in Gemini, which is seeing both sides, hearing both sides, not being a political person, being a spiritual person who can see both sides and just unconditionally love everyone, you know. So regardless of what you think about or this or that, I just felt like sharing some of these little occult symbols um, you know, uh, all this happened during an eclipse. It all happened during the eclipse in the sign of, you know, of a projectile weapon of a Shakespeare, you know? So very, very strange. What are the odds that all these things would happen? And again, that William Shakespeare, the first guy to take it, has already died. It's just, you know, these things are omens. So she's shaking her spear, Shakespeare, She's looking for the serpents of ignorance, the people who are ignorant, who are not gonna, who are gonna fall for this. You know what I mean? Because the elite actually believe that pop overpopulation is the biggest threat to the planet. So in their twisted, even though they have the technology to make it to where we could have double the population on this planet and still be fine, they don't like to think that way. They like to think, you know, because it's true. Like we could, we could um, improve our agricultural processes. We could. Uh, turn the Sahara into a rainforest that could feed the entire planet, just the Sahara alone. You know what I mean? We could all do that right now on the planet with if we got together and if all these elites actually wanted to. But they don't. They want to create a utopian civilization which is up to which is based on the elites having even more and us becoming slaves basically, becoming and just erasing the middle class. And um that's actually what they consider to be the me the most moral thing because they think that there are too many people breathing and taking up all the resources. And again, if you're a corrupt, only materialistic person, that is probably all you could see in this. And so uh, you can watch the British TV show Utopia if you want to see how the elite, how I think the elite really think about it. They do a really good job of portraying that. And that shows a, another great example of like predictive programming, basically. Um, all right, y'all. That's fun. I'll go back to more normal astrology stuff in my next video, but just there's not enough people speaking out about this info. You guys probably don't have any of that. You might just think, oh yeah, it's just all crazy. And yeah, maybe it is, but it's just really, really, really strange set of coincidences that, you know, the first guy to get the spear would be named William Shakespeare and that that would be even a thing. And then the fact that he's from the same region of England that Shakespeare's from, he's got a sister, you know, um, the other person to take it was Margaret, the name of his sister, that he's already died, that he died 33 days after the original William Shakespeare's death, that this all happened during an eclipse in the sign of the spear, K2 there, K2 is what we have to watch out for. K2 and Rahu, the eclipse rituals, I've already explained in previous videos how these are the times when the elite really ramp up their rituals to feed off of the ignorant, like uh, uh, 
the ignorant masses. And, you know, I already explained how all this stuff is just, is like Athena worship. You know what I mean? It's like this worship of Athena. Um, and Athena's symbol was the serpent and the owl, which are hugely intertwined with all this medical stuff um, all around the world. And, uh, yeah, it just seems like, I don't know, man. It just seems kind of coincidental. A lot of odd coincidences. And you see these things over and over and over repeating themselves. This is just one example of how the elite kind of, the news they put out, if you're a lay person, you read it and don't think anything of it. But they're literally showing it, shoving it in your face, what they're doing. Um, for those with ears to hear, you know? I mean, why is that even a saying from the Bible, you know? But that's a whole other topic. All right. Thanks, y'all. Take care.